Hey guys, I just did another clear on Kairos, and I was going to edit in like the gear and all at the end of the video, but I decided to put it at the start of the video because I wanted to just say right up front, I think this clear is not really the best way to do this fight. I, I thought about it, and I think I think changing the strategy almost entirely is going to be going to be better, and spending more time in phase two might be worth it to get. A better a better damage window so to speak so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and show the team and then you'll, you can watch the video and the video might seem you know disjointed because I'll be talking about how showing the gear afterwards I'm showing it at the start instead anyway you can follow it along here is the team and the gear we used and as I mentioned during the clear itself this is not a budget run by any means whatsoever um, I will try to figure out a budget run later but Behemi in the shift form, we start in the shift form. He's got auto protect, um, auto gen mit, double Galbana lilies, and philosopher stone in the shift form. Base form has um, full evasion, um, full evasion, philosopher stone, mechanical heart, and as much bulk as you can get with full evasion. So full evasion, um, passive provoke as well is very important. Passive provoke. Full evasion, um, there we go. He was our tank and he support chained as well. Elena and the shift form is, um, her shift form build is kind of weird. I ignore this, we actually didn't sing Zidane's STMR song in the strategy I went with, so forget that. Um, just some mana regen in the shift form. Base form is built for damage. Um, I gave her guts and I explained why I gave her guts during the video. It's very optional. You almost never will need it, but there's a small, small chance you'll need it on one turn. Very tiny chance, but uh, I gave it to her just in case. Uh, she's built for just damage in the base form. Her damage is very, very low, so it's, she's not even that important. She's mostly for morale and killer buffing. Um, Lang is pure support in both forms. Really high MP pool, mana reduction gear, three stars in formal suit, um, Philosopher's Stone, Call of the Wild, and the Paintbrush, and a source of blind, technically. We didn't really use it, though. Shift Form. Shift Form is using Guts, other than that same build, TMR, a blind weapon, Paintbrush, Call of the Wild, Philosopher's Stone, really high MP, and that allows her to get her um, mana back every turn, even with mana drain, she can always do her actions. Um, she never actually DPS'd during the fight, so you don't gotta worry about any kind of damage gear on her. Louise, um, in the, the base form, is again, really high MP, mana reduction gear. If you own it, give her permanent break immunity with um, Vermilion Flag. And there we go, I'll get out of this menu, please. There we go. Um, other than that, uh, base form, Philosopher's Stone, again, and as much MP as possible, and mana reduction. Shift form, pure damage. A um, little bit of mana reduction, um, double gun for her, you know, her setup. Uh, full killers versus demon and human. Yep, so there we go. Uh, Yigni in the shift form, um, same thing, mana reduction, lots of MP, Philosopher's Stone, uh, Technically, I gave him auto amplify. It's not really important. Um, Vermilion flag, if you own it, is really good. And then base form, pure damage. Double dagger for the imperil from Ling. Uh, mana reduction, killers, and there it is. He's got uh, 275 demon and human. Sky in the base form is using the dark bow, which is a guaranteed chance to blind in the base form. Um, this is important as well, anti-decay amulet. This gives an undispellable break immunity buff um, every time she shifts, so she can't be broken. We used her as our um, our person to soak the, the spell counter attacks, and we didn't want to get her broken, so we did that. Um, other than that, just some mana regen, etc. Shift form, pure damage. Gun build, um, chain cap helm, STMR, uh, killers, LB damage. Yeah, so she was the primary DPS here. She's got 280 LB, 300 Demon, 275 Human. And that was the clear. So now you can go ahead and watch the clear that um, I just did. But keep in mind, I'm still working on it. I'm going to try to do an even better clear soon. See you then. Hey, guys. I'm going to be going back to Kairos for a little bit of a higher score run. 
Um, and ex this time, I'm going to be explaining the fight in detail. Now that I understand what's going on, you know, I've kind of, for the most part, figured it out. Um, I figured out how to get around that defensive spirit buff. So I'm going to explain the fight and show it as we go. So I'm only using an EX15 team currently, which means one modifier I can't turn on. Just so I get a little bit better score, I'm going to leave off the defensive spirit modifier. Um, if you have really good gear, um, you know, EX3 units, etc., you can turn that on as well. And this should damage cap for you. But uh, it's a little tricky because it's it's kind of like relies on variance with Sky's damage. Um, but if your gear is better than mine, then you can you do even better. So this is the team we're going to be using. Um, I technically could get EX3 Ling from the step up on Monday, and I might do that and just play variance and try to get a perfect score with with um with this team. But this is not the budget run, just FYI. This is going to be pretty expensive using some very specific units and gear. Um, now that I understand the fight better, I will try to do a budget run either today or tomorrow. Now that I know what's going on, I can use that information to problem solve and make a more budget run. But this is the team we're going to use. Only EX15 te technically. Um, well, actually. Um, so anyway, I will go ahead and get, get into it. And I'm going to show you the gear and all at the end of the video. Okay, so turn zero is the ambush. He's going to mana drain everyone. But we've got things like Philosopher's Stones to deal with it. Okay, so before we do anything, um, we're going to go ahead and shift Behemi to the base form. Shift Ling to the base form. And shift Sky to the shift form. Now, the first person per turn that deals offensive damage to the boss is going to get single target dispelled. We're going to use Sky to absorb all of those. She's using the Decay Amulet to give her undispellable break immunity. So she cannot be broken, so she's a great choice to eat those dispels. Um, so she doesn't get broken at, in return. So we're going to go ahead and use her shifted LB to stack it up. That also applies accuracy down on the boss. Ling is going to fill morale, fill mana with passionate, and then do mitigation with transcendent. Okay, Elena is going to start filling morale with beloved and legendary. And Behemi on turn one is going to cover... We're going to Frilly and Ferocious. This is 50% Demon Mitigation, which is obviously a really big deal on this fight. And then we're going to do Almighty Guard for 90% General Mitigation. Now Louise is going to Firestarter for the field, Amplify with Heavy Firepower, Diverse Arsenal for Killers, and Power Boost for Stat Boost. And Yigni is going to Soul Projection, Double Shrouding Veil, and Seal of Doom for breaking the boss. So Sky is going to get dispelled. The rest are going to be, you know, here. Now Behemi should be fine here. We've got accuracy down from Sky. We've got full evasion. We've got 90% general mitt. We've got 50% um, physical mitt and a big stat buff from Louise. So Behemi should be totally fine here. Most attacks are going to miss from the accuracy down, and the rest are going to um, be heavily mitigated. Okay, and we're using Mechanical Heart to keep our tank alive. We can't really fit a healer on this team. If you don't have Mechanical Heart, Snow Bear is a viable alternative. If you don't have either of those, um, you know, pain. <laughs> okay, so L Lang is going to shift on this turn. We're going to do triple. We're going to Blythe, Passionate, and Dragon Dancer to fill LB Gauge. Now we're going to use Behemi's Limit for the better cover mitigation to, for more survivability. Elena is going to double. We're going to Beloved and Legendary for more morale. Yeah, the, the faster you can push morale on your side, the better, because the, the, you're going to start taking less damage. Okay, so we're going to now, with Sky, we're going to use her Magnus for that 87% attack break, and then hit the boss twice to get those counterattacks to go to her. Okay, now Yigni's going to go to the base form. Louise is going to go to the shift form. Now we're going to start dealing some damage to the boss. So we're going to quad disarming with Louise, and we're going to quad um, advanced fire, and then three novice fires with Yigni. So this is going to deal pretty low damage for now because we don't have much morale. These are morale skills, but as the morale goes in our favor, we're going to start dealing a lot more damage. So we're going to do our big burst on phase two. So we've got to get through phase one with just chaining for the most part. 
Now, Behemi at this point still has his 90% um, Magnus mitigation. We've also now got um, his Limit Burst mitigation as well for the better cover mitigation. So he's taken almost nothing. He's totally fine here. But at this point, Behemi's Magnus has worn off. He's lost his 90% general mitigation. So now it gets into the danger zone. Once he finishes countering, I'll continue to explain. And notice how countering, healing, push, pushes the morale in the wrong direction. You can see it's slowly climbing. Uh, that's a bug. I've, I've reported it. Um, it probably won't be fixed this Clash of Wills, to be honest. But hopefully by next Clash of Wills, it'll be fixed. Anyway, Bohemi has no Magnus mitigation anymore. So we're going to guard him on this turn for the survivability. Elena is going to give us a Azure Might Killer buff and then Be Legendary for more morale. Ling is going to go to the base form. We're going to use her base form Magnus for the physical mitigation on Behemi again. And then we're just going to fill morale twice with Ferocity and Blythe. Sky is going to shift. We're going to do the shifted LB. By the way, I should mention last turn the boss was blinded because of Sky. Sky is using the Dark Bow which applies blind to the boss in the base form. Anyway, we're going to do shifted LB on Sky to eat that to spell and stack her LB up. Now Yigni is going to quad Novice Fire, and Louise is going to quad triple disarming and then neutralizing. And we're going to deal some damage to the boss. Okay, perfect. So Bohemi is going to... Um, you know, take some hits here. We've got blind on the boss. We've got accuracy down on the boss. Uh, Behemi is guarding, but he doesn't have his Magnus mitigation, so he is going to take some pretty big hits, but he is luckily avoiding most of them, and the ones that do connect, he's guarding, so he's taking a lot of snaps. Okay, that was overall pretty fine. Pretty fine. Okay, so turn four is going to be another dangerous turn. The boss still has accuracy. The boss's accuracy buff goes away soon, but for now, turn four is still a dangerous turn. So we're going to use Resilient Will for 400% defense buff on turn four. Anyway, um, we're going to give Sky shift to the base form, and as usual, first to first action of the turn, uh, we're going to refresh her Magnus and then hit the boss twice with Furious Skyfall. All right, we're going to shift Ling, and we're going to do um, Assassin Stance. That's for the, the mitigation versus humans. So we're going to Assassin Stance, and then we're just going to fill morale twice with Blythe and Ferocity. Elena, the boss imperiled us last turn, so Elena is going to do um, Refragmentation to get rid of the imperils, and then Legendary Heroine. Again, we're going to guard Behemi because the boss has accuracy this turn. And we're going to deal some... Um, actually, no, we're not going to do damage. We're going to, sh we're going to do, a, do a setup again. So we're going to shift Yigni. We're going to shift Louise. Louise is going to reapply the field, the amp, the killers, and the stats. And Yigni is going to reapply um, soul projection, double shrouding, and seal of doom. Okay. So now the, the morale is also pushed all the way to 180+. plus. We can start using that good um, attack and magic buff. There we go, 192, very nice. Okay, so the boss did some fire, dark, and thunder attacks this turn, but because we, we removed the imperil with um, Elena, it didn't really matter. As you see, though, he's dealing a lot of damage. Behemi's guarding and still taking a ton of damage. Because he's guarding and we had that 400% defense buff, it was fine. Now, turn 5 and turn 6 are basically free turns. Um, the boss had accuracy turns 1 through 4. Now the boss's accuracy buff is gone. You see how it's blinking? That means it's going to wear off at the start of the boss's turn. And he's not going to reapply it until turn 7. So turn 5 and 6 with an evasion tank, you are 1,000% safe. The boss cannot hurt you on turns 5 and 6. So, we're going to take this moment to use Behemi to cover, reapply demon mitigation, and we're going to do Departed King's Mantle. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use Elena to just Azure Might and Legendary Heroine. Ling is going to go to the base form. We're going to do Ferocity, Enthrall, and Disarming. Now, if your Behemi didn't have enough mana, you could have done Ling first to refill mana and then use Behemi skills. Um, as usual, Sky is going to be the first person to hit. This turn, we're just going to stay in the base form and hit with Spirit Skyfall three times. 
to eat the counters. We're also going to go ahead and put up Resounding Will for the attack and magic buff. And now we're going to deal some damage. We're going to go to the base form with Yigni and quad Novice Spell Fire. Go to the shift form with Louise. And we're going to quad Disarming and Neutralizing. Okay, so we're going to deal some damage here. Um, now remember, we didn't actually turn on one of the defensive spirit modifiers. So you're probably going to be dealing a little bit less damage if you, if you have all the modifiers on. Um, we're actually dealing a little bit more damage than I kind of wanted to, truth be told. Um, we might be pushing too much damage. I think we kind of are. So I'm going to have to... Um, hmm. It's fine. We'll adjust. Anyway, as you can see, uh, Behemoth's taking zero damage. All the attacks are missing. You can't evade the mana during that. That hits no matter what. But all the actual damage and, damaging attacks missed on turn five. The boss cannot hurt you on turn five at all. Okay, turn six, same thing. The boss has no accuracy buff. Um, so we're going to use Sky to shift, and as the first action in the turn, Sky is going to use her limit burst. Now, now Sky is at maximum stacks. Uh, Lang is going to stay here. We're going to do Enthrall. We're going to do Fortifying for the physical mitigation, and we're going to do Dance of Ferocity. Um, we're going to use Behemi's limit burst here to reapply the mitigation, because we're still safe on turn six. Elena is going to Morale and Legendary. Um, now, I want to chain here and do a bunch of damage, but because um, we don't have one of the modifiers on, we're actually doing a little bit too much damage. We don't want to push the 50% threshold yet. So I'm just going to like do this twice, and then like some things to intention. Actually, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to dual wield that skill. And we're just going to dual wield this skill. And we'll go ahead and turn this on as well. And we're just going to dual wield these. We're not going to quad cast them. Because I don't want to push too much damage. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, we didn't want, we didn't want to go to the 50% threshold just yet. And the reason we're doing it on this turn is to get rid of the defensive spirit buff. And I'll show you in a moment. Okay, so once again, turn 6. The boss has no accuracy. He cannot hurt your tank other than the mana drain. He also managed during the party, but we don't really care. That's totally fine. Okay, so turn seven, we're going to be setting up for some burst. Okay, so wait for Behemoth to finish. Now turn seven, the boss is going to gain accuracy again. So Behemoth is once again in danger, if he would ever stop countering. Okay, so turn seven, we're going to guard Behemoth so he survives. Also, we're going to be spreading buffs with Yigni on t this turn. So we're going to use these one turn 400% buffs for morale so that Yigni spreads them and extends their durations. Also turn 7, we're setting up for burst. We do not want anyone to get dispelled on turn 7. And if you hit the boss, he counters dispels. We don't want that. So we're going to use only non-offensive skills on turn 7. So Sky is going to go to the base form and just cast the Magnus to reapply the breaks. We're going to have um, Ling shift. We're going to do Assassin Stance. We're going to do Rallying Dance to just to keep uh, triple cast going. And we're going to do Dance of Ferocity for morale. Elena is going to Azure and Legendary. All right, Yigni has to go before Louise because we're going to be putting up fields. So Yigni, in this order, is going to Vitality Fountain, Seared Wisdom on Sky, Fruits of Research, and then we're going to Gemini Enchantment. None of these actually hit the boss. That also spreads buffs to the party. Okay, that puts up a field, but we don't want that field. We want Louise's field. It's better. So Louise in the base form is now going to Firestarter, Heavy Firepower, Diverse Arsenal, and then we're going to Incapacitate Target to break the boss. And again, none of these deal damage, and none of these trigger a counterattack. Okay, so Behemi is at risk here. The boss has accuracy. We don't have any huge mitigations. We've only got 45% physical mitigation this turn, which is lower than we've been had the rest of the fight. So this turn is going to be a little bit painful, um, but with the Guardian, Behemi should be okay. And with guarding, accuracy down, all that, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. We had 400% defense as well. Okay, so turn 8 is going to be our first burst turn. Let's wait for Behemi to finish, and I'll explain 
more about this turn. Okay, so you'll notice right here the boss has one more turn of defense and spirit buff. Normally on this turn he would refresh the defense and spirit buff, but because we're going to push the 50% threshold on this turn, that's going to take priority and he will not refresh the defense and spirit buff on the turn we push that threshold. So we're going to do it on this turn, that way we get an opening to burst without that buff up. So let's go ahead and reapply the attack and magic buff. Also the threshold AOE dispels, so we're going to put up the undispellable defense buff as well. Okay, so before we do anything, Ling is going... The boss frequently removes imbues in your party, I don't know why or what causes it, but we're going to re-imbue the party first. So Ling is going to Blaze of the Phoenix, then we're going to use Dragon's Bite, which may or may not blind the boss, if so, great, if not, doesn't really matter that much, honestly. And then we're going to Dance of Ferocity for a little bit of morale. Yeah, blind didn't work that time. Oh, well. All right, so Elena, base form, is going to triple. We're going to piercing and double salvation. Behemi is going to assist in the chaining this turn with triple royal rake. Sky is going to shift and do her limit burst. Yigni is going to quad. We're going to novice spell four times and then cap with debilitating. Then Louise is going to shift. And Louise is just going to four times disarming. We want to save her neutralizing for next turn. Okay, so this will give us the 100 point chain score. It also pushed the 50% threshold, uh, hit point lock. Behemi is almost certainly going to die on the threshold unless you get god tier luck, where all five of the blood curdlings that he's covering all miss him. They're probably not. He's going to die. It doesn't matter if he dies. It's totally fine. The rest of the party might potentially get hit after Behemi dies. They're all using Guts except Sky, and Sky has high evasion, and and um, I think her Mirage is even undispellable. I don't know if it is or isn't. Anyway, let's get our 100 point chain score and push some damage. So the boss does still have the defense and spirit buff, so this is not gonna be our big burst yet. And there's the 100 point chain score. And we did... Now, you, you might see really high damage here because, um, you know, we're not using the, the one of the defense mods. Okay, here's Blood Curdling. There's the tank dud. And he covered Rampage. Sometimes the Rampage goes through. Nine out of ten times, Behemi will still cover Rampage even after he dies or, like, during his death animation. But once or twice, it has gotten through and hit the team, which is the reason I gave the team Guts. That is technically optional, though. Anyway... Now it's turn 9, it's phase 2. As you can see, the defense and spirit buff is gone. We can actually burst. But, that was also an AoE dispel on our entire party. The only thing we have remaining are undispellable buffs. So, as you can see, uh, most of these buffs have been all dispelled. We have to rebuff everything before the burst. This is why it's kind of tricky. Um, thankfully, Louise's, a lot of her buffs auto-cast. So we're going to go ahead and Resounding Will for the 400% attack and magic buff. We're going to shift um, Elena, and then we'll just do the 160 killer to demons and humans, and then just, um, actually not, not that, uh, Azure Might, and then we're going to do Blessing of the Azure. That cures breaks just in case someone would happen to be broken, but no one is on my team. Um, we're going to use... Uh, we need to refill Sky's LB as well. So we're going to use Ling to Ferocity for, for LB. We're going to do Reimbue for the party. And we're going to do Dragon Dancer for LB fill. That's going to fill Sky's LB back to the maximum. So we can do a burst again. So Sky, Yigni will just quad cast. We don't have anyone to, to, to bridge his self cap. And then Louise is now going to triple disarm him and neutralize him. Okay, so this is where your gear comes into play. The boss is still very, very bulky. I even have one of the mods not turned on, and I actually have not damage capped because Louise has been just giving me bad variants. Um, with good variants, I'll damage cap. With better gear and EX3 units, you can damage cap even, even with the last modifier on. So let's go ahead and give this a go and hope Louise cooperates with the variants here. Oh yeah, oh that was, that was much better. Oh, oh, I, I think we're good. I think this is my perfect score. Isn't it 2.14? I did 2.12. Did I not? Did I really not damage cap? 
Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Here's the... Sky, you jerk face. You did not... <sighs> Sky usually does way better. That was a, such a bad variance roll. But Louise did higher than usual. Wow, she, she really carried that one. Anyway, you get the idea. There was... Jeez, I didn't even change my rank. There was a way to do it. Now, that might not be the best way to do this clear. Um, I'm still going to be playing with it a little bit. But that, um, if your gear is exceptionally well, we've got EX3 units, you can use that strategy and get a perfect score, I think. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. FYI. But um, I'm only using EX2 units, and I don't have, you know, unlim un unlimited gear. Anyway, I will show you the team in a moment. I'm going to get a glass of water first, so I will be right back. <laughs> 